Spoilers. G'day! I've noticed that everybody's jumping on the Star Wars bandwagon, um, pretending they've been real fans for years. Um, unlike me, who has been an actual fan for years, I've dusted off my old BB-8 t-shirt from about 30 years ago, and I've also found my old lightsaber from Space Toys. Last night, I saw The Force Wakes Up, um, so I'm going to do a little mini review of it in case you're outside the cinema right now, first in line, or pacing back and forth, wondering whether you should go in and see it. Will it be another prequel? No, these are sequels. It's set in the future. It'll be a sequel or a sequel. Um, throughout the movie, Maybe because I was chowing down on pizza rolls, pizza rolls, the unmistakable famous voice of Mr. Plinkett came into my head. Quite a lot, actually. Actually, not at all. Except for when um, Han Solo was murdered. Oh, I should say spoilers first. Oh, I actually did hear Mr. Plinkett's voice once during the whole movie, but it wasn't from one of his Star Wars reviews. No, it was from Star Trek Nemesis. Where he describes the ending. Picard then just storms off the bridge at the end and everyone is left standing around with this look on their faces like this Star Trek shit's getting too violent for me. That's how I felt when Indiana Jones was impaled on a lightsaber. I thought this Star Wars shit's getting too violent for me. Sure Ben died in the first one, in the fourth one, but he kind of just disappeared and his cloak fell to the ground. Why couldn't they do that? So anyway, um, Indiana Jones and Carol Peterson had a son together. They called him Ben, and then he turned out to be some kind of emo Marilyn Manson, young Professor Snape type who wanted to be like Darth Vader. And he used to hold his helmet and say, I will avenge your death or something like that. Um, other stuff happens in the movie too. There's a stormtrooper who escapes the slavery of being a stormtrooper. His name escapes me at the moment. He meets this chick who has the force or the force is waking up inside of her. Anyway, she eventually finds, um, spoilers. She goes, she flies to like Camelot and climbs up this Celtic ruins and finds, um, the old, old, ancient, decaying George Lucas, and she tries to hand him the lightsaber. But I think BB-8, BB King, JJ Abrams, BB King stole the show. Um, but it was too reminiscent of Wally for me. And it was also reminiscent of another film I really love called A New Hope, where they put plans in a droid to smuggle him past the Empire. But I guess this time the Empire is called the First Reich, the First Order. And any similarities with the Nazi party are purely in the mind of those who cast them. Um, so Carol Peterson is um, heading up the Rebellion. I guess they're not called the Rebellion anymore. Or maybe they are. Anyway, C-3PO now has a red arm. I'm gonna have to buy some red paint. Oh dear. Oh dear indeed. Well, live long and prosper. I mean, sorry, <laughs> may the force be with you. Thanks for watching this in-depth review of Star Wars The Force Awakers. I can still take this stuff back to the store, including the pizza rolls. Yeah, um, Han Solo got impaled on a lightsaber by his son, Raven. Reven? I don't know how to pronounce his name.
Oh, Kylo Ren. Subscribe.